What made you decide to come here? What was the process like uh, of deciding to leave Missouri? Um, so, deciding to leave Missouri, I just felt like that I needed to improve my game. And, like, I felt like just being there, it kind of was just like helping me maintain. And not a knock on those guys. I love those guys over there, the program. Coach Drinkwitz, he's a great coach. Love those guys. But just personally, I feel like for me to improve my game, I needed to be somewhere else. And as soon as I entered the portal, you know, I let Coach Finley know. And he told me, you know, there's some stuff going on here. So, you know, I'll have to get back to you. And so I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And as time went on, he called me. And he's like, hey, do you still want to be a Sooner? I'm like, without a doubt, I want to be a Sooner. You know what I mean? Like, that's Coach Finley was my tight end coach my freshman year at Missouri. And, like, we had that connection. He knows what I'm about. I know what he's about. So it was just good to get back with him. What was it about him? And, and that relationship that, and, and what he does uh, with, with that position that made you decide to, to, you know, to, to want to be with him, I guess. So for me, like, he shows a lot of tough love, and that's what I need as a player. I need tough love. And he, he finds tunes those little techniques that the next level is really looking for. Like, watching him send tight ends like Kendall Bland and Alberto to the NFL and just watch him fine-tune those small things that they needed to fix, it was, it was a, a big eye-opener for me. Going all the way back to your initial recruitment to Missouri, what was the relationship like with Coach Finley? Well, I actually got recruited as a four-star DN, so I didn't. <laughs> I had no conversation with Coach Finley until they switched me to tight end once I got there. What What was that process like of, of, of switching? Yeah, so my freshman year, um, a tight end, Messiah Swinson, he was supposed to be a play, uh, third string tight end. He was a freshman, and he tore his ACL. So the, I had kind of had some background of blocking in high school, so they asked if I wanted to – transition to tight end to help the team be better. And I was all about the team, so I was like right away, like I'll, I'll do it without a doubt. And I ended up uh, earning a few postseason accolades and they asked me if I wanted to go back to the end. But after receiving postseason accolades, it's kind of like, nah, this, uh, this is where I feel like God wants me to be, so I just stayed. Seems like the kind of the word on you is, I think even talking to Joe John early in the process that you love the contact, the physical side of it. Uh, what's it been like getting the pads on here early? And what's, what's the adjustment been like, I guess? I'll say the adjustment here is like I can't make any false moves. Like I love the contact and I love it, but every player on that defense is le legit. So I have to make sure that my technique and I'm going full speed every time. It's like it's a big difference being here. How much has Braden helped? Uh, just kind of accumulating himself, but even – Mm -hmm. You guys are kind of going through the same thing, learning a new offense and yeah. kind of getting used to Coach Levy. Well, getting here, he it was obvious to see, like, every player loves Braden Willis. Every coach loves Braden Willis. So he kind of took me under his wing, and I accepted this role humbly. I didn't come in expecting to be a starter. I came in knowing who Braden Willis was, what he was about, and willing to learn from his game and take a piece from his game to make myself better. So he's just been absolutely incredible for me in my game. What kind of role that you came here to expand your game yeah. a little bit. What are you talking about? You've been a so, starter. You've yeah. played a lot of football already. So I feel like I was a, a pretty decent blocker, but there was a, a lot of things I lacked, like perimeter blocking and maybe my first steps. I, I kind of just had the physical piece of it. Like once I latch on, it's, you know what I mean? I'm a pretty good blocker. But my first things like first steps and perimeter blocking, I feel like Coach Finley was actually, you know, he's really good at teaching those things. And after watching some of Braden Willis's film, that, that right there let me know, like, he's an excellent blocker all around. So, like, that just got me fired up. You haven't had a chance to catch the ball much in your career yet. Everybody mm -hmm. says you can catch oh, yeah. and run around. So I definitely can, yeah. you, you expect to be much more involved in the receiving uh, game here? I wouldn't say I expect to. I, I'm just kind of, you know, whatever Coach Levy and Coach Venables want out of me, I'm, I'm here to give it to them. I'm here to serve the team. So the team is first for me, whether that be zero catches all season and – 50 pancakes, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, that makes my day. As long as the team is where we need to be, I'm fine. What kind of role does the tight end have in Coach Levy's offense? I would say we're more so like a second quarterback on the field, you know, kind of helping old linemen, talking to old linemen, talking to receivers, making sure people are on and off the ball, getting set. So, I mean, he, he expects a lot of us. What do you think of the tempo in this offense? It's definitely an adjustment for me. You know, University of Missouri, we had our own tempo, but Coach Levy's – his is definitely a lot faster, so I have to continue to work and push myself to be in the best shape I can be in. What's been your impression so far of Dylan Gabriel, uh, both as a quarterback and, and just the way that he's fit in with this team? Well, I mean, since, since I've met him, you know, and I, both of us transferred in, he accepted me as well as I accepted him. And just watching 
every other player and how they accepted us, like it, it kind of made us want to give more to the team, if that makes sense. And he's a great all-around quarterback, and just being able to work with him is a new experience for me. Reading what your coaches said about you at Missouri, they talked about they thought you were the best blocking tight end in football. Those accolades. You do something that not everybody likes to do. It's not, not everybody likes to block yet. You excel at it. Mm -hmm. Talk about that love for doing that, or just the fact you're really good at doing one thing that a lot of people don't like to do. So for me personally, I would say I just love doing what the team wants me to do. And I've had I had four years of high school offensive tackle blocking. So uh, I've been blocking all my life. Elementary school, uh, little league, I was an offensive lineman blocking. So blocking is not something that comes new to me. It was just learning how to find the techniques that makes me a better blocker. But I've always been a physical person. Like I said, I used to be off, uh, defensive end as well. So contact is nothing new to me. It's just finding those little techniques that can make me a better player. Once I do come across someone who's just as physical and just as strong as me, that will give me an upper hand. Were you an offensive tackle in high school? I was. I was a right tackle as well as a D. Wow. Okay. Sure. Okay. I, I used to be 280 pounds, so it was, it was a lot different. What are you, what are you now, 238? 245. So, uh, had you, so you never played tight end before? Before That's college, which, I have never played tight end in my life, ever. Oh, yeah. What was the, like, your initial thoughts when they said, I mean, hey, will you do this? It was definitely hard learning how to um, operate in that, in that setting because on an offensive scheme, I was just so used to blocking. And so once they moved me to tight end, they kind of told me, like, hey, Right now, just focus on the run plays. You know, you, you don't really have to focus on the pass, passing routes because I was about 270 at that time, which was fine with me. And once I was able to learn, uh, you know, those small run blocking things that helped me at the college level, it kind of opened my eyes to what I can be here at this level. And once I realized what I could be, I fell in love with the grind and the passion. And I just continued on the road. What was the hardest thing to making that adjustment as far as – the, the different kind of blocking you do mm -hmm. at, at the tight end spot and, and just, you know, some of the different roles that you've got there? I would say first and foremost, it had to be my weight loss. That contributed to being able to be agile sideline to sideline to be able to, you know, work my hips and cut off a block rather than just trying to, like, manhandle someone because yeah. at this level, I'm not going to be able to manhandle the majority of people I go to, you know, I'm 6'2", 245, so I have to be able to learn different techniques to be able to get my body in position to win my block, and that was probably one of the toughest things I had to learn. How did you go about the, the weight loss process? What was that like for you? How much did you drop? How quickly? And, and yeah. just uh, how, how tough or easy was it, I guess, to go through that? Yeah, so it actually, I started trying to lose weight once they did move me to tight end, and it took about three years for me to discipline myself on how to eat, but once I learned how to eat, the, the strength program and conditioning program will get you in the shape as long as you eat the way you're supposed to eat outside of the facility. And once I learned how to do that, the rest was history. I just continued to lose weight. Is there like something that you sort of latched onto and eat all the time? Or? Yeah, so I kind of gave up red meat and I was just a big chicken and fish guy on a regular basis. And that did a big difference for me severely, so. Um, also want to ask you about the, the, the Soul Mission program mm -hmm. and what, how much different is that from you know what you were experiencing in Missouri? And I know it's different here yeah. too. But and what really stands out to you about what you've uh, gone through with that program so far? It seems like that you know Caleb Kelly and those guys really yeah. genuinely care about us and our future aside from football. And I've had people you know who care about my my life outside of football, but never this passionate about it. Like it almost seems like they want it more than me. And so that continues to drive me to want it as well, if that makes sense. So just having those guys to continue to encourage me within like school and outside of football is, is a big help. And then I uh, also want to ask you about Jerry Schmidt. What's oh, it yeah. been like uh, working with him? Have you got acquainted with the Stairmaster yet? I have not. I've, I've actually been on time to everything that I was <laughs> supposed to be on. So, But uh, Coach Schmidt, you know, he, he's been getting us right. He's, he's a great coach. He definitely shows tough love. And one of the things I actually love about him is – he tells us he appreciates our work, which is like you don't you don't find that often for doing things that you're supposed to do. He tells you he appreciates that, and that just continues to reiterate and makes you want to show up and want to give your best effort. When a coach does that, like you're talking about uh, Jerry Schmidt appreciating, you talk about uh, some of the soul mission stuff and you know showing that mm -hmm. uh, you know genuine care for a player. 
how much easier does that make the the difficult part of it? You know, yeah. Schmidt's yelling at you, or you know, Brent's being demanding in practice, or whatever. Well, whenever they, you know, they they come with tough, the tough part of tough love. We kind of have to take a coach me coach approach to it, and because we know how they appreciate our effort, appreciate what we do, and they truly love us, we tend to take the way they coach us hard as love, if that makes sense. They want to see us do great. That's the only reason why they can be coaching me this hard, because they know what I can be, and they want me to get there. They want the best out of me. That's the only reason. Aside from uh, more difficult to push people around, you know, based on you know your weight than compared to it used to be, what other things about now dropping that kind of weight is is different and or like has, has you know been better for you either on the field or just kind of in everyday life because I'm always curious when people are able to drop yeah. that kind of weight you know so I mean I, I would say everyday life besides you know girls it hasn't really done anything but on the field wise it's, it's definitely helped my route running a lot better I've gotten faster as we went along I'm able to, I'm actually able to you know move more weight in the weight room as I've lost weight because I've gotten stronger if that makes sense but Ever since I've lost weight, it just felt like my game has been tremendously, has gotten tremendously better. Do you feel faster as well? Oh yeah, I definitely do. And I feel like I'm able to, you know, physically get through practice a lot easier, if that makes sense, with being, uh, with being able to weigh less. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Dan. Thank you.